first meeting of the day, right? Hey, how you doing? Uh, apart from uh, stomach ache, pretty good. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Are you sick or did you oh. something? I, I think I ate something. No, it, it just started like half hour ago. So, no, no, not that painful, but super annoying. <laughs> okay, so let's get yeah. the agenda and the issue up. <clears throat> okay, so um, I guess we'll hang out for a minute because I think both Kyle and Mike were going to try to be here today. Um, so just, uh, some general overview here. Um, the goal of what we're trying to do today is, uh, I wanted to take 30 minutes and, um, start talking about the process of identifying and pulling out issues for, um, for contributors from the community to actually kind of see what's going on um, because what we found is that when we take the time to um, add some context and link to the appropriate files and, and just kind of show people um, where the problems are, the, the community is always looking for things to do. And the, the problem is that typically we take notes that are like, do that thing I know how to do. And then that's the issue, right? Um, and so if we, if we take the time to say, um, there's an issue in this file, this is, this is what needs to be true when it's done, then people tend to actually pick those up and, uh, it's a good way to get more contributors on board and make the project a little friendlier. And ideally what this would mean is that, um, if we do this properly, it will give us as, uh, contributors a little bit more breathing room as, as core maintainers rather. Um, because we'll be able to write up issues and then the community will know how to pick them up as opposed to now where it, it feels like a lot of the issues require so much context or background knowledge that um, the community is typically not able to pick them up without a pretty s uh, serious amount of b like backlog research. Um, so what I'd like to do is, uh, is probably let Mikhail... Uh, Dustin, or if Mike shows up, um, the having the three of you, since you're doing the, the vast majority of the core maintainer work, uh, just kind of talk through whether or not this is possible uh, within the scope of, of things, um, how you would want to approach that in terms of like, does this happen during backlog grooming? Is one person responsible for writing these? Is everybody responsible for writing these? Um, and like what needs to be true and just deciding like, what are the things that we need to create? Do we need to create a flow chart like we did for the stale issues that will be kind of a decision tree of, um, whether or not an issue should be written up or put into a, like a maintainer backlog mm -hmm. because it's too much context. Um, 
would something like that be useful? Do we want to uh, build a template that's like, these are the things that need to be answered for a, a, an issue to be community ready? Um, so just things like that. Um, oh, and then the other thing too was one of the ideas that uh, I think Mike had, or, or maybe it was either Mike or Mikhail, had mentioned putting labels in for level of effort. So like this is like a low level of effort. It's probably, you know, one to 10 lines of code changed, or this is a medium level of effort. You're going to be changing two or three files or a high level of effort. Like you're building a new feature. Um, and so that would require some discussion on, is that actually something we want to do? Do we want to have a new labeling system? And if so, what are the criteria for like what fits inside of those labels? Um, so the last thing I'll say is my intention here is to make sure that this becomes something that is manageable because it's going to become like a chore that has to be done. So we want it to be a chore that is actually freeing up more time and, and like making the community stronger and making your days feel easier. Um, and if we don't accomplish that, then I feel like we haven't really gotten to the root problem. Um, with that, I, I guess I'll hand it over to you, Mikhail, first, because you've probably got the, the most context of anyone here. <clears throat> Um, I'm not sure where to start. Uh, the I, I think the first uh, first stuff you mentioned that uh, if this should be part of uh, issue grooming, um, we don't have like uh, exact process for for that. We we try to provide for now at least provide as much context uh, as possible. Just. Uh, just just when issue is uh what is it called escalated um okay um well so that i mean maybe that points to a bigger question do you think it would be useful to have a regular backlog grooming meeting uh i'm 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 just not sure if this need to be a uh, meeting uh, or we just like every one of us need to have a, a process to uh, do a uh, daily check for uh, issues that are marked with uh, ink team to review. Okay. Uh, because like meetings will take a long time, and usually those issues don't need all, all of us uh, to provide to, to sit in their meeting room and provide context. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and also. There is also also the fact that not everyone uh, on our team will have the uh, same context uh, as as everyone else. Uh, so. so so if we started with um, if we started with a daily like everyone as part of their day goes through the ink team uh, ink team review label, mm -hmm. um, would that be a low a low way, like a, an easy way. Sorry, it is early. I have to finish my coffee. Would that be an easy way to um, at least get more clarification on issues so that they were getting to the right place? Because those need to be reviewed by y'all anyway. So um, I'm just wondering if I, I agree that a meeting would probably be too like it's not going to accomplish much. But if every person is looking at that ink team need ink team review label every day, it would then at least keep that section clear and start organizing things from the top. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the problem that also need to be solved is so that uh, uh, right now we don't have this a single ink team to review and. Uh, so we don't duplicate efforts so some sort of like organization who who is working on on issues I'm not sure how how to do that uh, because assigning uh, assigning to issues is like uh, uh, so, uh, how should i call so, it so i i think you mean there that assigning to an issue means like you're gonna do it not look at right. it Right. Is that, yeah. is that kind yeah. of what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but so it, depend, it depends on 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 our organization because we don't have uh, we we right now we don't 
exactly know what it means when someone is assigned to issue. If okay. The person is supposed to fix the issue or is, if he's supposed to supervise the issue. That's a very good point. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's a definition that we probably need to talk about. Um, I, I have one question first, though. So going back to the, uh, the, the things that are labeled like team review, um, if, if the goal of that was to get, was to say that it was reviewed, right? Um, so that we've got 10 issues that say ink team, uh, ink team review, and we've got a few people every day that are going in and looking at those issues. My thought was the goal of that, of looking at that issue, wouldn't be to assign it out to someone, but would be to change the label so that it, people know where it needs to go. So it's labeled correctly and has the correct comments. And then you would change the label from ink team review to whatever the next step was and leave a comment about the review and notes on it. I don't know, I don't know if that's gonna if that's gonna work, but mm -hmm. then it would just go into the, the backlog. And could be picked up so it wouldn't need to be actually assigned out to a person the label would just be changed and the status would be changed so that it was basically because when it says ink team review that basically means it's blocked so you're just putting it back into play yeah so i i i was doing i was doing exactly that uh, if i reviewed a review issue and uh, provide context i just removed the uh, mm -hmm. ink team to review and if I felt like I provided enough context, I added the uh, what's the help wanted. I think issue is for that mark issues that have uh, enough context for like anyone in the community. To um, like it oh, goes to I, status I ready. Saying, yeah. or... There's a there's a bunch there's a few different labels I think that say like that it's ready for the next thing. Okay. Um, but I guess so. I guess then that leads to my question: It was that is that working or is that not working well? And if it's not, what what's not working? Well, well, the, the, those issues are are not. You, no, it, it's it's hard to say uh, how the process is is working when there are many, so many different issues and not uh, mm -hmm. and community is not always interested in picking those up. Yeah, mm -hmm. gotcha. Okay. So uh, it's hard to measure if like the the process is not working uh, based on that. Probably need some some way to measure that, but I have no idea how how to do that. Um. Okay. Yeah. Go so ahead, so I guess the the thing that would be interesting is figuring out. Um, there there seems to be kind of a break point where the level of effort to explain an issue exceeds the level of effort to just fix it. Um, and so I think the, the first thing we'd want to figure out is, um, what level of clarity is required for someone to complete an issue without having to get additional context. Um, and then beyond that, what do we need to do, um, to, well, that, that, yeah, that's a sliding scale though. Cause it's kind of like, it's like amount of effort you know, to explain it. And then the, the amount of context the person has on the project already. Right. And then where are those two lines intersect is where, you know, yeah, and also if you need to provide, uh, just full context or just a starting point, uh, where, where, where are things that are problematic describing issues are happening? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where the, the initial idea, um, Kyle, I'm not sure where you join, but so one of the things that we talked about earlier on was, um, was trying to just set like, what, what can we do to make issues more, uh, more easily engaged by the community? And some ideas that we kicked around were first, finding issues, like pretty much any issue that was doable by the community, uh, writing out the context and giving it to them. That's something that we've been doing intermittently, but uh, we could formalize that a little more. Uh, and uh. that could be done with like a flow chart or something. And then, sorry, one, let me finish the recap real quick. Um, and then the, the other thing that we talked about was in writing those up, providing a, a an indication of level of difficulty. So something like this is a low level of effort, mid level of effort or high level of effort. Um, mm. and that could be a combination of how much background knowledge you would need, 
uh, how many like how many actual files are going to be touched for the fix, whether or not the solution is like known and just needs to be implemented, or whether there's mm -hmm. research to be done, and uh, yeah. you know so so it could be something that's like, hey, this would be a great issue for someone in say like Jason Quince's shoes because it's yeah. a high level of effort and a high level of context, but it's not like dependent on anything else. So he could just pick it up and run with yeah. it versus something that's like, Hey, this is like a bug. Somebody needs to go into this file and like figure out this one missing piece of this, this, uh, like conditional mm -hmm. statement or something. Um, yeah. writing that up is a super low level of effort that nobody needs context for. Um, so the, yeah. So, so Marissa, you had a, a thought, go ahead. Um, and I don't, I don't know if this is actually something you can answer, but when you said that there are a lot of issues that aren't picked up, is there, is there any type of pattern to those issues that you've seen? Like, is it certain types of issues? Is there any, is there any pattern that we could say, okay, well, we know that these types of issues typically aren't picked up. Um, because if we can, then maybe we can figure out how to organize it based on that. But I, I don't know that that may be totally not doable. <laughs> but typically, if if we see a problem where something isn't being acted upon, like there's there's a similar theme or a similar pattern that's that's making it that way. Oh, I, mean, I mean, I don't know if it's a real problem or not. But <clears throat> one thing I've thought for a while is like if someone says this is broken and doesn't really provide like a clear example of like why or how it's broken. Um, so like needs repro, like those are the ones that I don't take a like hard look at. So, you know, so you're saying like, if it's, if it's missing template, like bug template details. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Or just like, uh, you know, it, it, like high level explanation of the issue, but then never, you know, like this, then that is how you like actually, you know, like replicate the issue. So I, I would say, um, like I, I thought this for a while, but something like code sandbox or GitHub or like requiring something like that when it's a bug fix would be like really helpful. And um, to that point, we do have an issue open to do loose validation of the the bug template. Um, we can't get too too wild on it because just because it involves like natural language processing more or less. But mm -hmm. um, we can say if the bug section is empty, then flag it, or if the end info is missing, flag it. Yeah. Um, we, we can, once we get a feel for how well this sandbox, this code sandbox integration is working, um, if that's really solid, then maybe we just say like, no matter what you did, you have to provide a code sandbox link and then, then we can validate really hard for that. But, um, in the, in the meantime, we can, you know, we can do our best at least. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So then in, in terms of actually like getting a, a flow in place, um, is there a, I guess what I, what I'm trying to figure out is how can we get a regular cadence in place where issues, like where we know when an issue is something that should be handed over to the community versus like put in a pile to be worked on by the, the core maintainers later. Um, and once an issue gets identified as something that should be picked up for the, by the community, um, we, how do we like who owns that or like, when is, when is that handled? So I think what it sounded like to me, um, is that there, there was a, there's already being a kind of like a, there's a review for the ink team review label. Mm -hmm. And then after that, there's like a, a breakdown, but because there's no direction on who needs to pick it up. So I think that there needs to be a step one, which is like a daily review of issues with the ink team, ink team review label. And then step two is where like it's breaking down. So like once we've, once that's been done, yeah, what are the things that need to be done? There needs to be context written. When is it handled? Yeah. Okay. And it, yeah, so like wh who would, uh, who would write it? when would that be handled and like what what are the checks that we would put in place to make sure that it's actually happening um mm -hmm. and these are the questions i can't answer because i i'm not in the like the day-to-day -day maintainer flow um so i think this is going to fall more to mikhail mike and dustin um and since you'll be the ones following the process i feel as though it would be ideal 
for the for the three of you to write that pro or not necessarily to write it, but to design it. Because if, if, um, if I design it, it's going to be done the way I would like, which is probably not the way you would like. So, yeah, I'm just like, you know, about all, everything on a road roadmap right now. And there's like nothing the community can do. Um, well, so it's like but I actually feel like that, that points out a good thing because one of the things that we can do then is say, is this on our roadmap? No. Okay. So that automatically then puts it as a strong candidate for being written up for community pickup. Yeah. Cause the community, what the community is good at is fixing bugs. We don't even know our bugs because we don't even know they exist because we're not, you know, using the product in every way that the community is. Uh, and then also it's just like filling in gaps. Like there's, I mean, that's why we have a plugin system so that people can innovate without talking to us, you know? Right. Like the concerns of Gatsby core are necessarily narrow so that we can actually, you know, make meaningful progress on them. Um, yeah, but the problem, I mean, so, so that's kind of the dilemma of core development sort of model is that when you have a core versus, you know, a core plus plugin model, that means core just necessarily gets esoteric and weird and hard and dense, uh, which means that to actually do anything meaningful with it, uh, it's like Gatsby core doesn't do a ton. I mean, it does a lot, but it is also at the same time, it doesn't do a lot, mm -hmm. but what it does is like increasingly weird. And like what we're working on is increasingly weird. So like the big problems right now are, you know, for example, we want to not run queries on demand when like during Gatsby develop, when the Gatsby develop server is starting. Mm -hmm. So to explain that, to, I mean, for someone to understand how to fix that, well, they would have to know what bootstrap is. They'd have to understand where that code is. They'd mm -hmm. have to know even what query running is. They'd have to know that now queries need to be run on demand. They know how to know how to trigger that from the development runtime. They have to know how to lazy load, you know, the query results. They have to know how to block, you know, how Gatsby blocks rendering um, mm -hmm. by waiting for data to come in from, you know, the back end. There's like seven interconnected things there to make that, you know, feature happen. Um, another one that's even simpler, but I actually posted an issue about this and tried to help somebody, which was, hey, we don't want to. We want so right now in develop we, we don't code split. We just have one big one big JavaScript file which was loaded into the into the browser. Where in production, you know, we do code split. And like there's actually no reason that's that's the case. I just kind of made a mistake that I thought that that would be helpful for some reason. And so I wrote up an issue about that. And somebody was like, Hey, I'll jump on this. And so I started explaining, like, okay, like you're gonna have to change how page components are required. And then that's going to change a bunch of other, you know, like how runtime then loads in code so that then it can render stuff. And the person kept coming back with questions, but then after a day or two, it just sort of trickled out because right. they realized that it's actually, well, like you just have to understand a bunch of things to actually make progress on it. Right. And, and so, um, I, I definitely agree with that. And so if we, if we then look at our, our issues and we say like, so the core the core and the roadmap have been defined and, and by and large have been put into epics. So mm -hmm. if I, if I filter out for everything that's not in an epic, we've got 492 issues that aren't on our roadmap. And that, that obviously some of those, some of these are on our roadmap, but, um, like how do we, how do we keep these from spiraling out of control? Um, when we are looking at, uh, you know, like for, so to allow the, the core maintainers, to work on the roadmap, how are we going to flag things like this? Like if I, let me get rid of everything that's not core. Uh, so 472 issues in here. Um, a lot of these are, are potentially stale or whatever, but some of these aren't. And so <laughs> what do we do to make these issues more accessible to the community so that they can fix them? Or at least to identify like, oh, this should be in our roadmap. Um, mm -hmm. Or, or, you know, this is really hard and we're probably not going to get to it for a while. Um, that, I guess that's what I mean. Cause we're, we're creeping up in issue count again and 
the core maintainers yeah. just cannot keep up with the volume. So the way that we keep that volume down is by making it more accessible for the community to handle the little things. Um, and I, I don't imagine that a lot of these are probably not enormous requiring all of the context of the Gatsby core, uh, which means that we should be able to maybe offload even 25% of them would be amazing. Um, but again, we would need a process for identifying what that 25% is and how to get that out to people. Okay. Well, maybe we could like test that theory sometime and just try to do this. Uh, yeah. And, and I, mean, I guess I, that's, I mean, I know most of the issues and there's, I mean, there's definitely some, but, um, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and like I said, like, this is the part that I just, I, I simply lack the context to be able to say with any kind of authority. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, the only thing that I feel like I can say with confidence is that having three and a half maintainers on this is not going to, it's not going to sustain. Um, sure. no, so yeah. if we, uh, it, unless we figure out how to scale and I, I, I feel like we shouldn't make our our only hope for scaling to hire more maintainers because the company, the community is going to outrun us like no matter what. Um, right. So I we mean, the only option is to, yeah, there's two options. It's to limit what we do or hire more people. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, cause there is just a certain threshold where the amount of effort to level up to understand the problem and the amount of effort, even when you've leveled up to solve the problem completely blows the, Oh, this is a fun little thing to do in the evening uh, budget. Right. And so it just leaves a huge class. It just leaves a lot of classes of problem mm -hmm. um, beyond the scope of, you know, the hobbyist uh, open source contributor. Right. And so once it passes that threshold, it's on us. Right. Food. Or, I mean, Eventually, Gatsby will get so big that there will be companies that are investing, you know, lots of money, and maybe they'll even have some. They'll they'll give permission for engineer to work, you know, half time on it. But we're 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 at least a year or two away from like serious contributions from, you know, anybody other than us. Right. What I, uh, yeah, and so I mean, anyways, yeah. So it's like as Gatsby Core gets better and more complex that that threshold is like it's actually dropping not not increasing like there's more and more mm -hmm. there's more and more things that are just beyond the uh beyond uh, normal people so if if jason is the goal still to understand the best way to identify what the small things are well the the ultimate goal is to get a process to get issues ready for the community no, um, I, I know. And and but. so I it, and I don't know. I don't I don't know what the what the the how is of that. I just know right. the what. Because if that to me seems like a key thing, because I I, I agree with with both of you that like it, it's going to get exponentially larger, right? So it's going to become it's it's already difficult to keep up with, and it's it's not going to get easier. Mm -hmm. But if there are if there is a percentage of, of issues that are quite small that can be worked on as a hobby, like someone can take it on and just, you know, do it at night and whatever. Um, it, it seems like it would be in our best interest to figure out how to identify those small things first. And sure. to identify that, I think we have to have a better understanding of how issues are, um, how people are going through issues now and identifying when something is small or not, because like I, I don't, I don't know. Um, how about, how about Jason, Lisa, how about you and you two and then like Mikael, or maybe just maybe, maybe do a session with all of us or something. And we just take, we just do a spike and take, you know, 45 minutes and, and go through an issue. Just go through oh, issues. Yeah. Just, I just, agree. Start, just take 10 issues and then read through them and then and, and then identify them because I mean yeah. I, feel like, I feel like yeah I feel like more more research would be really helpful right yeah. now because I'm sure that there are questions that you ask yourselves and I think documenting what those are can help us put a, a process in place that will say okay these are the questions that we have to ask and the answer is going to tell us whether or not the issue is small or not yeah. and if it's small okay. then it can go to the community 
Yeah, so there's a few other dimensions we can think about here. Cause like, so if, if the right framing is that uh, fixing these issues are too hard, then investing effort making understanding problems and fixing them easier both benefits us tremendously. And also it, it's, it's kind of like, okay, there's a dividing line again between like, this is too hard. I'm not going to like tackle this. Like if we make bugs easier to understand and to identify good fixes, then that threshold goes down to the community also benefiting us hugely because everything we do is better. Um, I, I have to hop off because of the preview meeting. Um, right. So I, I have to go, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be on that call and kind of write through the thought process so that we can talk. Yeah. I was just saying, because writing up, writing up uh, issues is one way of explaining how to do things, but just investing in efforts in educating people, um, whether that's tooling or, you know, uh, documentation around like how core works or how things work or how to like find identify stuff. Uh, there's also just like we could do seminars sort of thing where we could like, hey, we're gonna have a two hour talk on fixing a bug, you know, uh, and, and broadcast that. Um, all those things make it the, 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 the threshold for like, I can fix a bug in like five hours. Mm -hmm. That expands, you know, the number of bugs that someone who's like actually genuinely interested can do, which is a lot of people are genuinely interested. Right. But it's like it's so, so there's there's so yeah. The question is, how do we fit more things into that? One one solution that that is the core problem, I think. And so like one solution is writing up issues that are really tightly defined. Another solution is, you know, refactoring core to make it more clear, like adding tooling, educating. I mean, we already have the pairing, but maybe even like identify promising people and do like longer pairings where like, Hey, like we'll spend, uh, you know, three hours on this, like more difficult bug. Once you pass some threshold of, you know, like you're actually serious about learning. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean that, that, so these all seem like, uh, like good things. Um, it, it is kind of showing me though, that this may not be feasible in its current form. Um, so the, as far as next steps go, we're going to, um, schedule a meeting, uh, or I guess schedule a pairing session to go through issues together and write down the process. Well, also just to validate them. Cause I mean, we could just like go through a random sampling of issues and we're like, Oh, like if we actually made this accessible and like we improve the description, this would definitely be solvable by, you know, whatever. So we just like go through like, you know, 50 issues and then we can count that and we'd be like, well, uh, five of the, th and then we can do an experiment saying, okay, if we improve the description on five of these, then what happens? Yeah. Yeah. We need to measure the re results of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, better descriptions on a small number of issues and uh, measuring resolution time engagement. And what would be cool too is if we found, like let's say we find 10 issues that would be good candidates, let's write up five of them and not write up the other five and then just measure the, the time to resolution for those issues. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing. What do you mean by uh, a good candidates? <laughs> well, like if, if there are issues that, let's say we find 10 issues that are all roughly the same scope um, that would require roughly the same amount of background knowledge and effort. And then mm -hmm. we write up five of them and we don't write up the other five, but we label them both as like help wanted or something. Um, then oh. we can we can see how quickly they get picked up by the community. Uh, yeah. Sure, it's just not every issue will be like that where we can write like, write this up. And if we want to design process that will handle all of most of the issues, we should not only pick ten good issues for the just just for that. Oh, uh, okay. Just, just yeah, I, I think I mean I think that's going to be part of the the pairing session is kind of okay. identifying like what what do we want to scope this down to? Because what it may be is that we initially scope it down to like the happiest path. And these are, this is when we find issues that are less than 
three hours of effort and touch two files or less or something like that. Um, because then we, we can say, oh, that's an automatic, like that goes to the community. And we know that that can be picked up. We know that's a medium level of effort. We know that it's, it's manageable. Um, and therefore we know it's not a wasted effort, or maybe we try something more ambitious. Like we say, you know, we, we do some small, medium and large stuff and, and see what the impact is. Um, but either way, yeah, I think this is, I think this will be good. We'll do a pairing session, go through some issues. Um, Marissa will kind of pull out some research, uh, and then we'll do a, a small experiment, uh, TBD on what that experiment is. Um, anything else that we should take away as an action step from here? Did I talk about anything that we didn't actually write down? Um, well, the action step would be, uh, I, I think what we need to also is uh, how to handle the in-team review issues, like um, design this process, right? Uh, I mentioned that, but... Okay. Um, who... Who wants to own that? Because I, I feel like I just lack the context to be useful in that capacity. Uh, yeah, I think I can own that. Okay. Um, and are you going to set up a meeting for that or? Um, yeah, sure. Just, just not sure when. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I guess the. Yeah. I, I probably would need to uh, research how 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 the how this is handled in other repositories. Maybe to to borrow some ideas, present something to discuss. Okay. Um, cool. Well, then I will. Um, so I'll create an issue for you for this, and then yeah, I thanks. will. Um, I'll get Marissa an issue for this, and this will be the outcome of this first meeting. Um, so cool. I think that's everything. I also think that uh, at least Kyle is supposed to be on another meeting right now. So I will let everyone go. All right. Thanks, y'all. I appreciate you coming in today. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah.